to another craft roulette tutorial slash at least process video I don't know whatever we want to call these it's been a whole series so uh, let me straighten my mat a little bit so we don't all feel seasick but let me just pull up the parameters quick which I believe are so it involves the card suggested was a joy fold card which some people interpreted as any fold that brings you joy but there is an actual car fancy fold called a joy fold uh this pattern i got from call me crafty al i want to say one of the summer um she loads of cards i will throw a link down below so uh you can look at her process video on this but basically you make a little card and you put it inside, and then this would sort of center inside this larger card. Does that make sense? And then this would fold down. So you'd have sort of this piece and then potentially patterns here or here. Uh, obviously, the original had patterns on all three of these surfaces because it was designed to use pattern paper. And uh, then you could have this area to write in and then you know it basically opens up and this worked out pretty nicely i actually intended to reverse these colors and have a cream larger color card and then the inset but i actually think this looks nicer so sometimes happy accidents are cool i am going to ink uh blend a little on the edge of this just to kind of pull the colors together uh one of the other parameters was fall colors and a, an ombre or gradient so I had this watercolor background I had already done, which basically worked on both of those. So I'm planning to use this piece here and put it in a few different ways. And then I haven't fully decided what I want to do here. I like the idea of this really vibrant pattern. And by the time you put another this card on it, I feel it softens it up. This is a uh, cat scrappiness, um, not turkey trouble. <laughs> Gobble, gobble. Here we go. <laughs> I am like the worst influencer ever. Anyway, uh, so we have a sort of a softer pattern which you could use. It's more of a yellow gingham or I, I actually like this bold one. I think it'll look pretty good all put together. And the last parameter was smile or smiles. Um, this actually came in a stash. It's uh, my favorite things dog theme set. And the dogs all appear to be smiling. I particularly like this guy. He looks very smiley, although these guys are smiley too. I might do this guy. I can't figure out what kind of dog this is supposed to be. If you know, let me know. It kind of looks like a corgi, but it looks a little too athletic. Like these look very cor This looks very corgi-y. Uh, but this guy looks a little more athletic. But anyway, he's a very smiley dog. And uh, I think, you know, dog colors are also sort of folly. And I really pulled this because I really like this, your dog gone wonderful. I think that's a cute sentiment. I do like the you're amazing too, which I might use instead. I don't know. I think if you look at how wide this is, I think these, these top three will fit very nicely on this card. And we can uh, grab our Misty and make this. A lot easier. I also pulled the Simon Hurley Dudes die cuts, of which I have a bunch of packs, but this is the one I'm currently going through, where basically all the dudes are smiling. Um, I think it's a little big for this size card. Like, it would probably work really well if you pulled one and had them standing on the inside. Actually, that's kind of a neat idea. Let's see how that would look. Because you always have sort of the, like, a boy and their dog. That guy's not very smiley. It's a very, it's a very aggressive looking dude for whatever reason. It seems like he'd be yelling at his dog to not be happy. But actually, this kind of works. Let's see. So if we had this all together, and you could do sort of an overlap of this guy. Because this would be open by the time you get here on the card. And then you could do him in fall colors as well. I kind of like that. I can Okay, I changed my mind. I kind of like the boy and his dog idea. 
And I think he would definitely have, I think this guy would definitely have this dog. And uh, since it's my theory, we can call it whatever we want. Uh, and if you are playing along, we are past the normal submission dates, but I'm a patron, so I can submit late, which is nice. Let me just double check the parameters. That is correct. We will have two smiles, both a, actually I think I have, I think, do I have a double stick layer here? I might, I do. We only we need one dude, but, uh, so we have some coloring to do on all this stuff, and then the rest of this card should pretty much come together. Um, I'm gonna start by doing a little ink blending and then we can actually do our, we'll do some stamping and then some coloring, I think. I will, I had this Ranger Ink Blender, so I think I'm just going to grab a little terracotta on it in addition to, it had gold on it, but I'm just lightly grabbing a little, And that is not quite the color I want. So, can we, well, I guess we'll just run with it. Let me grab. It's a very fall brown. It actually matches the plaid, so I mean, there's that. But I'm just going to try and soften this up a little bit. And maybe we will just... Do that around the edges. Whoops. So we may just put that side down. Let's clean our fingers and try this blade again. Um, Cause luckily this lines up with uh, one of the size we were going to glue down, but anyway, this time we're going to use a much more delicate hand. That's kind of my problem with ink sometimes, like it's so easy to like, it's hard to take it away, so it's sort of like you're all, you're always a little better off starting with a little more delicate blend, and then once you've kind of worked some of the ink off your blending tool, yeah, that's basically what I want. I just want a little... Around the edges, I think it'll help pull in some of the colors of the plaid and the ombre. So I think we can move on to stamping on this guy and then coloring a lot of stuff. The thing I do like about these pre-done die cuts is they sure make the process really easy. Um, I will just... We'll see what we want to do here, but I'm thinking it should be pretty straightforward. It's cool because these came from my Secret Santa, and like, I don't know if any of you other guys uh, did the LB Hammercraft did Secret Santa, but I thought it was a lot of fun. And you got a bunch of stuff that I don't know that I would have known existed otherwise. Although my favorite things I've been relatively into wanting to try some of their products. Their latest release is pretty awesome, so that may be coming soon to a craft room near me. Um, so I want, let me make sure I have this, I want our little dog. There is this little blemish here. We can always fix that later because we could put some kind of bling on it or a sticker or whatever. We'll figure it Cover over our little oopsie mark. I like the idea of the dog kind of grounded on the ground, too. What a kind of... Kind of like how that's... Set up. I will grab these guys on my door. Oops. Let me just make sure those are still where I want them. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, I'm going to just use black, I think, today. And 
as per usual. I mean, she got black ink all over the door of my Misty. But uh, I like to get the black ink particularly off right away because I have a tendency to forget about it. Uh... Well, that's unfortunate. But we have extra white, so we can fix it. Um, that stamp for pretty good, although it's upside down, so we are going to probably move this in an effort to see how many mistakes we can make on, this, on a single card. And let's see. Let us just... What do I want? Probably, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so. Three quarters sounds about right. And I'm just going to eyeball this and then we can... Well, I guess I don't have to because I know that this is for the... I mean, this is, yeah, this is four and a quarter, so we could do that. Probably better just stamp it and then trim it down. So I'll, I'll just trim a little bit off, but we'll probably need to trim some more in a bit. Once we sort of... Then we can sort of stamp in the center and go from there. And extra ink off these guys quick. Can move a dog of unknown type. When you are stamping sentiments, it's usually good to not push down super hard because it's really easy to sort of mangle the letters. So that's why for this I am doing this relatively gingerly. And two stamps and we look pretty good. I sort of... Yeah, that should work. Let's say... Sort of eyeball trimming this about the same on both sides. Which we can do in our trimmer. Say about there looks good to me. a little off the other side. And that looks pretty good. Now I think the only thing we have to do is color the, this little guy. I have some brown. I think we'll start with a little brown because I think like a dark brown hair definitely looks good. Plus this is sort of, uh, the, pa the paper these are made out of is sort of textured, so I, I sort of like how if you use light strokes with colored pencils, you know, you kind of can see that texture. Obviously you wanted less texture, you just have to color this a bit more. But I am going to do his hair and then just do his boots. It's sort of a darker version of the same color. 
need to look for some, basically a skin tone and some fall colors, I want to say. So, maybe some khaki pants. I feel like maybe a nice, oh, I don't know, like a cranberry or purple sweater. And that's kind of a skin tone. I feel like I had a better paint somewhere, but okay. Or like right here. There's an idea. And here's a couple other colors. It's a fairly light pink, so. Just doing a similar thing, just coloring pretty lightly. The way these die cuts are set up, uh, the eyes are all pretty much black, so that's sort of nice, but also, like, it doesn't give you... You can't really quite make it you, but, you know... In any event, I think there are things. We'll assume it's a nicer day than it is currently outside, where it's a seasonable zero. And, uh, yeah, so let's say he had, let's see what these colors are before we start using them. This is Tuscan Red, which I think works good, well, it should work, yeah, that is which is a little purpley, but there's um, a lot of purple in the plaid. Well, I guess I should say there's there's blues and like redder leaning um, colors in the plaid. I still need to sort of jump on the bandwagon with all the alcohol ink colorers. Although I kind of, I mean, I kind of like sort of the way this turns out looking pretty rustic. And then we'll just have orange pants because khaki is my favorite color. Plus it's, these actually are more like, you know, uh, that really yellow kind of khaki. But anyway, looks pretty good. Now, melodies aside, uh, we can get this guy assembled. I'm going to start by putting the sentiment on, so mostly so I don't have forget about doing it. It's like we are out of adhesive. Which doesn't really surprise me. I've been doing so many cards lately, it's like you're it's like you're always running out of adhesive. Uh, I actually really like these AdTech tape glue runners. I've had some really good luck with them, so I, I need to go on Amazon some refills. But And I want to probably make sure this is glued all the way to the edge just for Kennedy and say, you're so doggone wonderful. Just sort of making sure... This is matted pretty evenly because once it's down, it's going to be pretty much down. That came out pretty great. Oh, and we forgot to color our dog. Well, we can fix that now, can't we? Now, I think I'll use the same color palette. I'm going to use the orange here for the muzzle area which is kind of a vibrant color for a dog, but uh, we will make do. And then we'll grab the burnt umber, dark umber, because we definitely want him to have a dark nose, because he's a dog. And what a slightly different color, I want to say. The Rouge Tooth, that's a little red. This is, I think this is Burnt Sienna, which is, should give us sort of a nice 
brown color, I think. And also it's going to be kind of in keeping with uh, the colors of the card. So I like that. Like it, like it feels like it's very much bringing in um, the colors of the background here. But I am curious what dog this is supposed to be. If you know what actual breed I am coloring, please let me know. It's one I'm not familiar with. But it is a very friendly dog. So, coloring aside, I think the next thing we just need to do is adhere down our pattern paper. Very much like this cat scrappiness uh, pattern paper. It's relatively thick, so it, it holds up pretty nicely. This one's pretty straightforward because it's a square, so you can do it sort of in any alignment you want. I'm pretty much going to be looking at whatever I think the uh, edge looks like in probably, well, let's see. So we could do that. I feel like that works the best. So we will put that down. Whoops. Not wreck our card in the process. But this is basically how we're looking so far. And then the next step to put this together is to basically put glue on this side that we did a good job screwing up. And then it won't really be an issue anymore because it will be glued down to the card. And people will only know about it if they watch this video. But basically we want to center this. And I'm just going to eyeball this, but if you wanted to be more exact, you could. Basically, you're getting about mm, three quarters of an inch of the pattern paper around it. So it looks like that. And we open it up. And then the total card looks like this. This actually, I think, came out a little low. But what we are going to then do is figure out if we want to use this guy, I think... I really like the idea of using him here. And then you could just write a message, of course. Gives you a little space for a message. But I do like it being sort of a surprise card. I guess the other option is we could put him here. Well, I do kind of like that, right? It's sort of, uh, this isn't quite hidden. I don't know. I'm trying to decide. If I feel like if you did this, like almost making it more hidden, I mean, you still see his legs, so I guess it wouldn't be really that hidden. I, I kind of like it on the... Well, you could put it here. I kind of like that, right? Like, then you have two smiles. No, I think, I think I'm going to go here. Because then it, it's a... I like the surprise element, but it, you still have enough space. Because I feel like... Like, if you put it, put this guy here, I do like it, the fact that he kind of comes off the card. And you could bring him all the way over here. But I feel like this is a pretty small writing area, so I'd almost, I think I'd prefer him on the inside. Because then it's sort of a real surprise, too. I think I will do that. Oops. Well, actually, you could write on both of these, I guess. So, I don't know. Th this makes more sense. So, I think I will just put him here. Yeah, because he'll be totally obscured by the card when the card is closed. I feel like I could... Grab a bone folder quick and just 
just make sure this hole here is burnished properly. And there we go. You're doggone wonderful. And when you open it up, you can write a, a message here. Which, but we got our fall colors, we got our smiles times two. We fixed our mistake with a cute little heart that I actually like how this looks. Um, I don't know, the other thing you could do is sort of do a couple more of them, I guess, to sort of make it a little more, but I don't know, I like how it looks. So uh, that is Craft Roulette, I want to say, Craft Roulette 142 or 143. 143. There we go. Uh, and it is a happy little card. Hope you guys enjoyed.